four for today, I believe. This will also be helpful for just the general public to know how things work, which a lot of the population and homeless and all. I can mention this because my friend Yui died, okay? The people that are on the street, Albert yesterday, I was with the guys at the park, Albert and Pro and Claire and all. And Albert, somebody gave Albert an ice bike. It's nice. It's like a classic bicycle. And a friend Albert just picked it up. And Albert was sitting at the park, you know, just hanging out. He had a flat tire. And he was like, oh, I can't. He has a... Albert is homeless. But Albert's a nice guy. He's an alcoholic. He had a pair of flyers. He wanted to fix, he wanted to fix the flat. But he couldn't get it off because they talked the nuts rolled back. Sure enough, in my trunk, right here actually, I told him I got my tools in the trunk. And I got a crescent wrench. And you know, it's funny because that crescent wrench that he needed, it was from Austin for trouble. Who I just mentioned, I think, on the last video. But he left there. He left like clothes at my house for a long time. And uh, I had to throw them out. They were wet. And, like for a year but in one of the bags he had a crescent wrench a two big like crescent wrench so I saved it I had my so I'll be use that he fixed the flat and yesterday as a matter of fact Albert had work and he was so happy to have work he said oh great he was going to eat at Timmins I was at Timmins but then he had work and, and I watched Albert now all he has is a bike backpack and he's happy. He's happy. Now, the people on the street that had drug problems, they actually have a degree of responsibility. And I'll mention this, because Huey has now died. Dirk Kiesler was no longer able to purchase methamphetamine in Flower Bluff. Well, John, it's illegal. Look, drug addicts find ways to get meth. He was unable to get it because the people that do sell it knew that he was unhinged in the area of violence. Th that was not Dirk's first attempted murder. Dirk has managed to get his record expunged on other things besides attempted murder. I, I think that's why he does not want to go back to Michigan. But he managed to get things off his record that normally are very pretty severe things. How do you know? The other thing that the street guys are able to do, they're able to investigate and find things out about people on their own because that's part of the life of some of it. So he was banned from purchasing meth. So Yui would do him the favor. Yui's dead. And Yui, of course, had a problem with meth as well. So he would give, he would get it for Dirk. I would have never told you that one, but Yui's gone. And what's Dirk's response to even a favor like that? His response is, Yui was a piece of shit, and he's so happy he's dead. Now, on the street, if you're part of that, and the reason I mentioned Albert, is Dirk is, uh, uh, the scripture talks about work hater. Talk, it, it's in Proverbs. The person that's lazy will not, but the, the interpretation is work hater. I have a lot of friends in the street that have worked. And I just gave you Albert's example. And I've had a lot of them. And to me, I think, you know, they have the they have the discipline to go to work. Even though all they have is a bicycle and a flat. And Albert had a tube for his flat. And he was so happy when I gave him that crescent wrench. I thought I wouldn't be happy. I wouldn't have the, you know, I would, wouldn't have the 
ability to, to go on in life because I would think, oh, but, but Dirk was never like that. He just was always a freeloader. Now, the problem is every other person that he knows, no matter who it is, he views them. My other friend who knew Dirk for many years, he views everybody else as a piece of shit. Even the guys who are working, and he does not work, and he eats at all the free things, gets all the free benefits, every one of them are a piece of shit. And my other friend, who I've known for years, he said, you know, Dirk always refers to everybody else as free. Dirk views himself as like he's retired. Now for you CCPD, you know who Dirk is. And the reason he keeps, right now he's got like a little canoe on the top of his vehicle, like a little boat. He does that because he, believes, he sees himself as retired. He actually views himself as he's like a retired snowbird that comes south. No, no. <laughs> but he views himself as better than everybody. Now, even with all the problems with this guy, what he does is he parks all over places under the underpass and all that. Look, if he was not out doing the other things he does, and the antifreeze incident, he tried to get one of the guys who gave him antifreeze to drink, mixed it in the drink. The burning of the camps, the oldest. So it, it's not just a homeless person who's trying to make it, like all my other friends. He's a danger in that, in that area. And so now we have him on the street, living in Flower Bluff, and he parks that vehicle, Walmart parking lot under the underpass, whatever. If he just stuck to himself and was not out looking for trouble, that's why he has no friends. I was one of his only friends. But he goes out and he pursues in those cases. And so that's the difference, okay? That's the difference. My advice a few years ago, when he got out of the trouble that he was in for trying to kill Tennessee, I actually said, it's better maybe if you go back to Michigan, Dirk. I've helped Dirk for many years, and I've known him for many years. He also likes going to the, uh, there's a big lake here in Texas, uh, I guess East Texas. And Sam Rayburn Park and all, and he used to like to go there, and Stay up that way, and and I and my advice was: you got a lot of people. You, you made enemies. Antifreeze poison. Somebody cannot purchase your meth anymore. You made a lot of enemies. Maybe it's better for you to move on, just for his own sake. But not only does he not move on, he still tries to target in the sense of the CPS thing that upset me. But he calling on the other friend of mine and getting the kid taken away. Things like that. If you're in the same situation and you're a homeless person, you try to at least, and if you have a drug problem, okay, you do your best to not be going around breaking the law, but then you don't go out and be hunting down everybody else with your binoculars, seeing, and then admitting, oh, I'm just seeing where you're at, John. Uh, looking at your mitzvah when my binoculars making sure you're not with some person. What? So he should be off the street. You got enough calls to arrest that guy today. I believe his vehicle is illegal right now. And he purports himself as a winter Texan coming down to this area. So you got enough. He tried to slip me the names of people to contact. Uh, as far as I know, they were legal names. I never got that list. He tries to slip it to me through the, the county jail, through the little door slot, telling me, oh, yeah, just, no, this is legal. No, it's not. It's, uh, you, you don't put any messages or put anything in, take anything out. So you're willing to try and get me to break the law. Look, I'm not an idiot. I knew you're not supposed to. And I try to help him. So he should be off the street. He had the chance to leave, and he intimidated Tennessee, obviously almost murdered him. The reason the doctors at Memorial, uh, Tennessee told me when I seen him after he had that open heart surgery, 
they said it was a miracle he survived by Tennessee because his aorta was cut. And so doctors kind of from the area came to, to look, sort of like, oh, this was some miracle that he lived. And Dirk should have been so grateful that, he, that Tennessee didn't die. Look, every witness, including yesterday, uh, some of them brought it up. He said, no, no, we all saw it. But he intimidated the witnesses. Now, if after all of that was done, you finally laid low. But no, you, you're still out pursuing. So that's what, and for the general public, that's what you're seeing there. There's calls to pick him up today, just for all the other things that he was involved in. And the, and the guys that are homeless and struggling, I understand it. Some of them do live in their vehicles. They park in Walmart or H-E-B or under the overpass, or they, and then they'll be there a few days, and the cops come out and tell them you got to move. But in a case like Dirk, the guy's uh, dangerous. So you have enough calls to get him off the streets.